We're going to return now to today's top story. A woman with suspected Ebola is being tested and treated at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital as we go to air this morning. Well, it's not yet been confirmed that this patient has the virus. It's certainly something that the authorities are taking very, very seriously. According to the World Health Organisation, more than 2,800 people have died in West Africa so far since the outbreak. Liberia, the hardest hit, with more than 1,500 deaths in that country alone. So are we prepared for this case here in Perth? Someone who can hopefully answer that question is David Mountain from the Australian Medical Association who joins us now. Uh, good morning to you, David. Yeah, good morning. Firstly, can I ask you, what's the process? This woman Hello. comes back here to WA. She presents with symptoms that are consistent with Ebola. Can you talk us through the process now? She's obviously in isolation, but as we move through towards a possible diagnosis, can you just talk us through what happens? Well, obviously, she comes into an isolation area and a room, and she'll have proper precautions in case she is infectious. And then she'll get blood testing and other testing if she's got diarrhoea. Uh, to, to one, make sure she doesn't have a bowler, but also to check for all the other illnesses she can possibly have. OK, so while we're in that, uh, that limbo land, if you like, where she has symptoms, but we're not yet sure what she has, uh, how do you actually treat her? What medications or treatments are being administered? Well, she'll be treated like anybody else with an infectious disease. So obviously she's isolated to protect uh, the, the staff uh, and make sure they don't pick up anything that she's got. At the same time, she'll be given fluids and supportive care. Uh, she'll be given stuff for uh, aches and pains and treated with analgesia. Uh, and obviously if we pick up any tests on the way that suggest another illness is going on, then, then she might start treatment for that illness. I noticed that she's being treated there at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital. Is that the best place that we have here in Perth for such a case to be treated? And, and what sort of precautions are available there to make sure that uh, not only this, uh, this patient but also those treating her are safe? Yeah, well, this is the best hospital to uh, treat these sort of cases. It's got proper isolation rooms. It's the designated hospital for tropical diseases uh, and tropical outbreaks. Uh, and so it's got set up with all the right facilities. It's got entry routes and exit routes so that uh, other people aren't at risk of contamination and patients can go directly to those isolation rooms. David, we've been speaking this morning about Ebola-like symptoms. That's how she's been categorised thus far. Can you tell us what those symptoms actually are? Well, unfortunately, Ebola-like symptoms are very like a lot of other illnesses. So they can get aches, pains, uh, feel like they've got a flu-like illness, uh, high fevers and temperatures. And then eventually, they, if they've got Ebola, they start to get a hemorrhagic uh, disease. So they start to bleed, uh, can have bloody diarrhoea, coughing up blood uh, and, and other hemorrhages. But that's very late on in the disease. So early on, it, it presents very like a lot of other tropical diseases sound like absolutely horrific symptoms, David. Uh, in the event that she is uh, testing positive for Ebola, what will happen to her then? Look, if she does test positive for Ebola, then obviously she would need to be treated uh, obviously symptomatically. There are no specific treatments uh, for Ebola at the moment, uh, so she would just be given supportive care. The fact is that with supportive care, if you're you know, reasonably well otherwise, there is still a significant number of people who are otherwise fit and well will survive, but obviously it's the best supportive treatment that could be offered uh, would be given to her. All right, David, we'll be watching this one with great interest. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you.